What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince talking about mountains today on the road again. Uh, these are really, really impressive mountains. Rise up about 4,000 feet, about one and a quarter kilometers uh, above the big city down below there. Very few places on Earth will you see this kind of mountain topography uh, looming over uh, over an urban area like this. Uh, among other things, it's tough to build in places like this. And if you have big rock slides or landslides or something coming down off the mountains there, that's a that's a potential issue. So this is a, a not an everyday site, globally speaking. Uh, and where this gigantic mountain is, uh, is a place that you might not necessarily associate with huge mountains. Uh, that's the mountain right there. The city is Monterey, Mexico. And that big mountain is the outermost expression of this geologic feature that Geologists in the States, at least, would refer to as the Monterey Salient. Uh, it is a zone of really tightly packed mountains that sort of stick out ahead uh, of the rest of the Sierra Madre Oriental, which is this big mountain range that runs sort of down like the, the eastern half, I guess, of the, uh, of the spine of Mexico there. Really remarkable place. Uh, again, one that you don't hear about that much, but one that is one of the most eye-catching zones of landforms uh i think anywhere on on planet earth got the gulf of mexico up there looking sort of to the southeast here uh, you can see all those lumpy salt related features there out in the gulf of mexico the yellow dot there is on top of monterey and the yellow line there is sort of like the the mountain front here and that idea of this being a salient uh that's a term geologists use to refer to a place where a zone of mountains kind of kind of juts out ahead of the rest of the mountain front. Uh, in most cases, and possibly in all cases, I've never really thought about this, but in most cases, it, it's related to compressional mountains, mountains that are formed by, by squeezing uh, the Earth's crust. And that's absolutely the case uh, that you're looking at, that you're looking at here. So really impressive topography. Uh, I, I don't think I exaggerate when I say this is this is almost one of a kind uh, just to see something this extreme that is is almost surrounded by by a big urban area of over a over a million people. The mountains themselves are pretty interesting. They're they're made of sedimentary rocks. If you look at them closely in Google Earth, you can see the layers there on the side of this really crazy steep one sticking up above the city. Uh, the layering is is tilted really, really steeply. Uh, in fact, it's almost it's almost tilted vertical there. And you see that actually quite a bit uh, in this range. That's one of the most interesting details of it uh, is that the the tilting of the sedimentary strata is really, really extreme. Uh, and in many cases, like the one you see here, uh, the, the layers are quite literally vertical. And in some places, they've actually been tilted upwards. Uh, even even past vertical geologists call that being overturned. And you do see that in this area. Of course, you can see the city off there towards the left side of the screen. And it's a, a really fantastic coupling of this crazy topography with a, with this really developed urban area. If you cruise around here on Google Earth, um, the the detail that you get out of this mountain range uh, is is also sort of one of a kind um, around the world. In a lot of, of sort of arid climates like this, where you don't have a huge amount of vegetation, you are able to see a lot of geologic detail on slopes. But the uh, the layers there running along the trends of the mountains make really really interesting patterns. It's almost um, kind of the same effect you get from lidar really when you can when you can strip the vegetation away you just don't you don't need it in a, in this landscape because there's not very much vegetation uh, to begin with so you can actually see kind of the kind of the reality of the geologic structure of these mountains so sedimentary rocks layers that are that are sort of stood up on end and in some cases you can see you know sort of folding and curving of the layers actually exposed on the sides of the mountains. That's what you're looking at here. You can see the uh, the layering kind of curving, like the pointers following there on the face of this mountain. And if you get up close with, with Google Earth here, I mean, you can see like every, every last detail, actually individual layers uh, of the rock here. Most of this that's, that's supporting the mountains here is limestone. Uh, there are some sandstones mixed in, but predominantly the uh, the, the geologic layering that actually supports these big steep mountains here is is almost entirely uh, entirely limestone so what's going on here why does this place look like this there's probably 
uh, 13, 15 mountain ridges or something like that that are behind the city here. Um, closely packed mountains. There's a lot of places around the world where you get repeated ridges like this. Very few of them have them so, so tightly packed. And so many of them, they're all pretty big. Um, thousands of feet of relief, three or 4,000 feet. So you're looking at one, one to one and a quarter kilometers. There's a place or two in here where the, where the relief from the valley to the top of the mountain uh, is more like like 6,000 feet. It's probably 1.8 1. kilometers or something like that. So it's a very impressive stack of mountains here. And they have a, a very particular and distinct formative process uh, associated with them. So to start thinking about that, you got to go from this big picture view uh, and go to an even bigger picture view. So we've been, we've been looking at the mountains there from that direction, looking over Monterey and the mountains from the Northwest. So that arrow is kind of pointing you on what our perspective has been. Uh, and that is just one part of a really, really, really long chain of compressional mountains that includes the Canadian and American Rockies and goes all the way down there into, uh, into Central America. So this whole area has experienced compressional tectonics over uh, the last few tens of millions of years. A lot of that is being modified today, particularly like right underneath the left arrow there. That's actually being modified by extension today. So these are not the most recent, recently formed mountains on Earth, but they're much younger than, for example, the Appalachians. And again, like everything uh, along along the mountain front on this white line, they are fundamentally related to to compression, to to collisional type of of plate movement right so taking the earth's crust making it shorter and and making it thicker so when you look at at the range here you want to visualize squeezing squeezing it together think like like an accordion or something like that and in fact if you look at the if you look at the wrinkles there you know that that accordion analogy that, that might actually start to to make sense and i think you will like that better uh, when we actually kind of sketch out what's going on here. Um, this is a good one, good one for paint. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, and what you're about to see diagrammed here uh, is, is sort of a summary of what you're going to find if you Google uh, the the geology of this part of the world. And again, it's it's a really fantastic way of looking at how the earth moves and how mountain ranges like this are, are ultimately a product of movement uh, and that movement sort of changing the shape of things, right? So we'll hop out to paint here. Hang on just a minute. All right, so here we are in paint. Going to start out with just the most basic concepts. Uh, you can imagine a really, really long and thin sequence of layers, and we're just going to represent it sort of as just one, one layer there, All right? So let's squish that thing and make it shorter. There's a variety of ways it can respond to that. It could kind of break and shingle and stack up on itself, or... It could fold and wrinkle up like this. Uh, imagine almost like a like a tablecloth sliding across a really smooth table or, or something like that. So if you took those wrinkles there and stretched them back out, you would get the original length of that shape, right? So this this style of of folding in this case, where you've got these tight, almost like loops stacked up on each other. That is a possible way uh, that our our layer system can respond to getting squeezed there. Okay, so take that idea and we're going to dress it up with a little bit more realistic detail related to the particular setting. But I think you'll find that some of the overall shapes are going to be pretty recognizable. We'll do something like that. So here's our our main our main layer that's going to be kind of the key player in terms of making the mountain landscape. All right, so let's now draw a land surface on this. That's going to be the mountain there that we started off with. A couple mountains there, another mountain there, another mountain there. A couple mountains there. Okay. So what's happened here is that with erosion over time, and there was never never like a McDonald's arch sticking up out of the ground, while this folding would have been happening, uh, the Earth's crust would have been responding to that. And among other things, because it's shortening and getting thicker, the crust tends to kind of be weighed down by that. So 
there is there is a means of accommodating the folding. There can also be a little bit of erosion to the growing folds as well. It depends from mountain range to mountain range, but suffice it to say, the way I initially drew that, no, there was not this crazy thing poking out of the ground. But what you see today in this part of Mexico uh, has been eroded a good bit since the initial formation. And everywhere that our folded layer there encounters the land surface, there's going to be a mountain there because that layer is going to be that good, tough, strong limestone that's actually able to, to hold up mountains, right? So let's kind of clean this up a little bit and momentarily we'll, uh, we're going to speed the process up here, but at least for this part, it's okay to come through there and remove the tops of those folds. So now you have a bunch of chopped off folds there and you have the same geologic layer encountering the earth's surface just time and time again. And fundamentally, this is a this is a very nice way to get yourself a whole passel of mountain ridges out of the same geologic layer. So each one of those uh, each one of those mountain ridges you see there uh, in the Monterey Salient, it's actually the the same general horizon of rock. It has just been folded on itself so tightly like that that what we've here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We made nine nine ridges there pretty quickly just by just by squishing everything together okay so at this point uh i'm gonna finish out this mountain landscape here so we're gonna push it out into the distance there we have a few more like this okay so do that and bring this home as kind of a finalized block diagram i'm gonna speed this up but uh for the Bob Ross fans out there, the mountains have friends this time. I am sure they are all very happy. They are in good company. They got their uh, they got their favorite mountain friend out there taking their picture of the rest. Of, I don't know, something like that, right? But this should look pretty cool. Um, going to have to draw a lot of topography on it, though. It's going to take a while. Speed it up. Be back with you in just a minute. Okay, so got everything colored in here very nicely. Obviously, a whole lot of mountains here. They all got friends. Bob Ross would be very pleased by this, I'm sure. Uh, and what what is the pink layer? Uh, the pink layer is is salt. Um, it, broadly speaking, we call it evaporites. So there there is like halite rock salt in there significantly. There's also uh, the mineral gypsum producing large scale layers of of gypsum. These form from evaporating ocean basins, uh, and they don't behave. Like other sedimentary rocks, they're they're much more kind of ductile and fluid and actually sort of flow over time. So salt is the key to wrinkling the uh, the yellow layer, which would be the limestone and a little bit of sandstone in, into those crazy sort of buckle folds. They're called detachment folds uh, because the folding layer is is sort of disconnected from from what's underneath it. The gray stuff down there we call basement. I actually don't know what that is in the case of this mountain range. I've not seen that written about very much. It might be older rocks of the continental crust, kind of igneous and metamorphic rock. It might be deeper sedimentary strata underneath the salt. One way or another, the salt is key. Uh, and the overall range here is actually, it's it's not terribly thick. I would say beneath the uh, beneath the folds right here, down to the top of that basement, from the top of one of the mountains, it might be uh, what? Let's see, two two and a half miles, maybe maybe three miles, four to five kilometers to the very top of one of the mountains. That's that's actually pretty thin for a fold thrust belt like this. So having that that reasonably thin folding section. Combined with the salt, gives you that really wild kind of kind of wrinkling style there, and it's a way to turn one layer of rock into like a dozen mountains uh, in in pretty short order there, right? So 
really cool structural style. Uh, and when you when you look at those huge mountains, if you stood at the bottom one looking up, I mean, it'd be like looming above you. But it, it's it's always neat to think uh, in, in terms of the big picture like this, because that mountain is is just kind of one stub here on what was this absolutely enormous section, you know, of almost like kind of like accordion style, uh, accordion style wrinkles in the earth. All right. So let's head back to the maps here and, uh, and keep rolling. Okay. So when you're looking down on that landscape now, you should be seeing wrinkles there, uh, folds with salt underneath them that allowed those limestone and, and sandstone layers to kind of ride and buckle along again, sort of like on a on top of a table, like a tablecloth. Uh, and when you when you look at those mountains and think of those vertical layers, you should be seeing kind of projecting those those folds up and out of it. Right. So, uh, again, a really cool way to think about geology. Uh, and, and Earth's fold thrust belts in general, th this is kind of how they operate. What you see is mountains have been sort of carved out of, of these bigger geologic structures. So at the larger scale, almost like the back of a dragon or something like that, like coming up out of the ground there. And there's probably been ugh, maybe not quite as much as a, a mile eroded off the top of those folds. There might have been that much. I'm trying to think of it in terms of kilometers, a kilometer and a half, two kilometers, something like that. So you you might be getting into the into the mile, but but probably not as much as two miles. That might be a bit strong. One way or another, it's big. A lot of rock is missing, and what you see today is that skeleton that's sort of been like like etched out of the whole thing, right? So someone actually asked for this video. I was going to make it anyway. Somebody, the algorithm, you know, sent the other person on Earth who was thinking about this place. I'm like, well, tell me what's going on here. So I was like, all right, I can do it. They also asked about this area, uh, northwest of Monterey. This is the La Popa Basin. Uh, it has some really interesting landform patterns in it as well. They're quite different from those giant mountains uh, behind Monterey, but they have same kind of sinuous forms and everything. Salt is at play here uh, as well, and that salt fundamentally has kind of bent and folded sedimentary layers, and erosion has cut into them. You end up with all these incredible what are called flat iron structures here. It's where the, the tilted layers have been sort of carved up by flowing water. Ends up looking like scales on an alligator's back or something like that. Fascinating patterns to see. Again, almost like looking at it with LIDAR because there's no trees growing here. Uh, you can cruise all around this area and everywhere you look has some of the most incredible patterns that you'd never think were totally natural, but this is just how a, how a landscape works on planet Earth. So what makes what makes these shapes? Um, same area, uh, you know that there's there's salt going on here. You know that these are deformed layers of sedimentary rock. But how did they take on these entirely different patterns? Paint round two. Um, this one's going to challenge me. This is another salt thing. I don't work with, with salt stuff, actually. Um, so we'll see if I can pull this one off. But, but it, too, has a pretty interesting story. So we'll hop out to paint again. Hang on just a minute. Okay, here we are. Paint round two. I'm going to try to make those funny shapes in La Popa. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to do another block here. Um, so... We know that that these are going to be they're going to be folded sedimentary layers, uh, but the type of folding associated with them is going to be really different uh, from what you saw over there in the Monterey Salient, and of course that's why the landscape looks different. It's got the rocks are are messed up in a different way. Uh, this is also salt related, and. What I'm going to try to do here is just give you a general idea of what these structures might look like. Now, when I say I don't work, I don't work in salt, like salt, salt tectonics, salt geology is, is kind of its own thing because like I said, salt, salt and gypsum evaporates. They behave so differently from any other rock type. Uh, you, you have to kind of, I don't know, you have to kind of get used to them, I guess you would say. Um, and that is not something I've missed with a bunch, but we'll be able to get the, the general patterns here. And these patterns are probably going to be, be pretty useful for, for visualizing um, what's going on in the, uh, in the landscape there. Okay. Got to be sure all these lines are touching because we're going to try to, going to try to fill in colors here in just a minute. Uh, that's probably pretty good. Something like that. Yeah, it'll probably work. 
Okay. Okay. So probably tell already that this doesn't look much like the uh like the accordion folds there, which is good. Uh it's not supposed to. We'll start filling in some layers here. Okay, so we'll have this kind of dark brick red thing down deep there. Um okay, we'll put color on top. And now we'll just kind of start. I guess working our working our way up and what you should be seeing here right off the bat is that there's layers present here on the right side that you don't have over there on the left uh, sometimes geology can be pretty straightforward like there like that either something is something is there or it is not uh, and in this case it is it is definitely an is not so we have younger layers that are involved in these bigger kind of you know sort of like kind of U-shaped structures here. Uh, we're gonna need to put something down underneath all this. Can you imagine what it might be? Not with that color. Here we go, this is gonna work, all right. So gotta put the, uh, gotta put the salt down there somewhere and it's gonna be underneath these overlying structures. Pink salt, yet again, okay? Put our basement rock down underneath there and what you got going here uh, again is the kind of the unusual behavior, the style of movement that you associate with geologic scale salt and gypsum uh, evaporites. When they get loaded with sediment, the sediment weighs down and sort of drives the the salt up, up and out. Um, in the lidar video came out pretty recently. Um, talked about salt domes in Louisiana, kind of the same type of thing. Loading of sediment, sediment literally sinks, it's more dense and it sinks down in that salt and kind of kind of squeezes it up and out. That's what you see with these uh, with these almost kind of tongues coming up out of the ground here that in some places actually break the surface. So what's this going to do for you uh, in terms of a landscape? Well, it's still a bunch of tilted layers interacting with the land service. I'm gonna have to use a different color than that. That ain't gonna work. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is come in uh, and fill in the topography up here, sort of as you see starting right now. Okay, that's gonna take a while because there's a lot of ridges here. I'm gonna speed this one up too. Sit back, relax, watch. We'll talk about it when I get finished. Hang on just a minute.
Okay. So that's, that's going to work out pretty well, actually. Um, so each, each of those, you know, kind of like, like concentric, concentric ringed valleys or whatever, uh, those are our structural basins, uh, like the one you see here. So the, the, the layers, it's kind of bowl shaped and it, it kind of funnels in from all sides. And fundamentally you want to think about sinking down into the salt. You got the salt being squeezed up here. And in this particular case, the, the salt has already been squeezed out of there. So if you put, you put rock back on this landscape, there would be a kind of a tongue of, of salt kind of squeezed up like that, right? That would be, that would be within the rock column were it not eroded away. But the layers have actually, the term is, is weld. Um, a geologist would say that, don't do that, that this uh, is, is a salt weld where the salt was squeezed up and then, then things kind of smashed together and, and cut it off there. All right. So this is a, this is again, a, a very salt specific type of movement. And one of the, the big overall big picture aspects of it is that it's a way to take several of these U-shaped structures and kind of like stack them up all together in the landscape. So the features like you see here, the style of movement that you see here, you ain't going to get that really anywhere in Appalachia because we don't have a, a salt driven system like the one that we're talking about here uh, in, in northeastern Mexico. All right. So let's head back to the maps. OK, so hopefully it gives you an idea of what's underneath this crazy oval shaped thing here. Big structural basin uh, got salt coming up. And in fact, that's what this white stuff is. That's actually where a, a diapir of salt and evaporite is is actually erupted to the uh, to the surface. There's another one right there. So you know that stuff's down there. This is a whole lot thicker as well uh, compared to what's ever behind Monterey. There's probably five five miles plus of sediment and salt underneath the surface here. So you're looking at eight kilometers, maybe as much as ten uh, in some places. So it's a bigger system, and the fact that those diapirs are there, kind of squeezing that that material up and out of there, gives you a sense of of what's going on right off the bat. So really cool structures to look at, and and that's the overall concept there is that kind of more Angelos wavy style that uh, is associated with salt again, but a different type of movement, right? So when you're looking at this landscape, the big picture, got that stuff going on there in the foreground in La Popa, that's where, where stuff is kind of sinking and forcing the salt up. And in the background, compressional tectonics there, wrinkling things up like the tablecloth. Awesome area. Check this one out in Google Earth. Um, I, I think you could go, uh, there's, there's like a lot of salt tectonics in, in like Western Pakistan. There's not really a, a, a mountain range there though. That's, that's the equivalent of the, uh, the Monterey salient. So it's worth, it's worth the time on Google earth. Uh, and for whatever reason, it's just not a place that you hear about much in, in terms of mountains, but it, it will stand next to anywhere, uh, on the planet for sure. As far as mountain topography goes, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, not sure what's coming up next. Got to do a video about gold, uh, one of these days. I don't know. That one, that one might be upcoming. Either way, hope you check out the next one.